Hi, I've got here a big Dior flask that contains 20 liters of liquid air and today I'm going to perform 10 amazing science experiments with it. Before we start, let's quickly answer the question what is liquid air? It's basically just air that has been cooled down to very low temperatures around minus 194 degrees Celsius so that it turns into a liquid. This is colder than pretty much anything you encounter in everyday life, resulting in some pretty amazing properties. You can see that the liquid air is boiling right here even though it is cold outside, because the boiling point of liquid air is always way below ambient temperatures. To further explore what liquid air is, let's start with the first experiment. Now we all know that things are able to burn in regular air. Now the question is can they burn in liquid air too? And the answer is a bit more complex than you might expect. If you just try it and take a wooden splint that's burning and put it in liquid air, you can see it immediately extinguishes before it even touches the liquid. Now why is that? Because air is a mixture of gases, 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 1% argon, trace amounts of CO2, water vapor and other noble gases. We can just ignore everything besides the two main components. The main component nitrogen has a boiling point of negative 196 degrees Celsius, which is the lowest of all components. Oxygen has a boiling point of minus 183 degrees Celsius, which is more than 10 degrees higher than the boiling point of nitrogen. Therefore, at first, we are just boiling off pure nitrogen, which will extinguish the flame. So, at first glance, liquid air has the same properties as liquid nitrogen. Now, once enough nitrogen in the liquid air has boiled off, things start burning extremely well in liquid air, which brings us to the second experiment. Now we have pretty pure oxygen in there, as you can see. Now let's see how well some charcoal burns when we soak it with that. And now some regular cotton wool. And now let's see about some iron wool. Holy Moses! I've burnt it in can. Let's now go all in with the iron wool. Now that was really destructive. So for the next experiment we'll do something more constructive. So we are going to be making a special kind of dessert by just taking some whipped cream and spraying it into the liquid air. And now this stuff is actually edible. It's edible because the liquid air is so fluffy, causing it to have a very low heat capacity. Oh! So cold. It's funny how the frozen whipped cream kind of explodes everywhere after it's been lying on the ground for a second. On the topic of explosions, one thing that you should never do with liquid air is to place it in a sealed container, which is precisely what I'm doing right now. Because the liquid air expands by a factor of 700 when warming up. Causing the PET petal to spectacularly explode. That's all we have left of the bottle. The same principle can be used to make ping pong balls spin like crazy. If we soak them in liquid air after having made a pinhole in them, they will go absolutely crazy after warming up. From analyzing the frequency of the sound from the recording, 
I concluded that the bolt must have been spinning at 236 starts, which is 14,000 runs per minute. We can use the same principle to turn a PET bottle into a rocket. This bottle is filled two thirds with water and now I'm going to add some liquid air. And now watch what happens when I turn the bottle upside down. It's a good idea to aim it somewhere where nothing gets destroyed. Let's watch this from a bit further away. Before anything else goes wrong, let's move on to something with a lower velocity. If we take this ordinary salad for example, it is usually quite flexible and you wouldn't be worried about dropping it because nothing would happen. But if we soak it in liquid air, that's an entirely different story. It becomes super brittle. Then if we drop it, we just get a million shards of salad. And a lot of very awesome looking fog. I need to quickly clean this up before it all thaws up and makes a giant mess. Elias, do you know where the salad went that I wanted to prepare for lunch? No. The same principle can be applied to anything that's made out of rubber. At room temperature it's really stretchy and flexible, as you can see with this rubber glove. Oops. Once we've brought it down to the temperature of liquid air, we can see that it behaves a lot more like glass and it's super brittle and that's because we have brought it down below the glass transition temperature. Liquid air is so incredibly cold that it can even freeze things that are designed not to be frozen like this antifreeze here for example. Did you hear that cracking sound? That's exactly what the antifreeze is supposed to avoid. So you can see we've frozen the antifreeze solid and the glass it was in is completely cracked. You can see the completely cracked glass, that's exactly what the antifreeze was supposed to avoid. So remember, if the winter is that cold that air turns into a liquid, antifreeze won't work. Even though that's then probably going to be one of the last things you are going to worry about. Now as a finale, let's see what happens when I mix the liquid air with something really hot, like boiling water, for example. Three, two, one. Go. Oh. <laughs> okay, that was absolutely insane. The boiling water instantly causes all of the liquid air to evaporate, leaving a giant cloud of fog because all the water vapor in the air gets cooled down, causing it to turn into fog. I tried that experiment in a previous video with some soap in the water, which not only made a giant cloud, but also a giant mess. Now that is it for 10 amazing experiments you can do with liquid air. If you want to see more content like that, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss it. Tell me in the comments below what was your favorite experiments. Leave a like and thanks a lot for watching.